Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Vietnam Innovators Series. Um, we're recording here today from the Viet Cetra's radio room here in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we are welcoming a guest and a good, very good friend of mine. Um, his name is Oscar Jesionik. He is Polish. I did not try to pronounce his name in Polish because that would be impossible for me, but I got it almost right. Anyways, Oscar is uh, a good friend of mine. I've known him for a few years. He's a tech entrepreneur. He's He's been building a lot of cool stuff for the last few years. And his latest venture has has taken off a little bit. And, and we want to hear what that story is. And it's one that's not too common in Vietnam. It's one about audiobooks and audio content. And more specifically, it's an audio content app. And the name of it is called Phonos, where he is the co-founder and CEO. So, Oscar, uh, thank you for joining us here today at the studio. We're, Thanks for having me. It's a me. pleasure to have you. Um, so, uh, instead of me trying to pronounce your last name again, how about, you know, we'll love to hear from you and, and obviously what you do at Phonos and what your team's all about. Why Phonos? Why now? Give us your elevator pitch. All right, sure. So for the name, the Polish pronunciation would be a Sionek, but because I grew up in Austria, mm. the German pronunci pronunciation is Jesionek, and then I usually just English go by the English one, Jesionek. Perfect. So I'm not okay. too particular about it. Excellent. Yeah. Why Phonos? So Phonos for us, you know, what, what has been really interesting these past, I don't know, 10 years or so has been the resurgence of audio, the resurgence of audio. Mm. What we've seen is, you know, in the past, you had the radio phase where radio was really huge. It was a big cultural moment. Then TV kind of took over and radio declined in just general importance. Mm -hmm. But what we've seen the last 10 years has been a little bit of a resurgence of interest in audio. So we've seen podcasts, we've seen audiobooks in the US, for example, really take off in the last 10 years with really crazy growth numbers mm -hmm. year to year to year. And not just in Western countries, also in China, for example, the last two years, we're seeing the same growth. So with audio, there's a couple of reasons for it right now. And the first one is we all have a smartphone, we all have it in our pocket, and we all have fast internet. So suddenly, it's very easy to stream content. Mm -hmm. And you combine that with another thing, which is suddenly, we have very busy lives. Right? Life is busier and busier. No one really has that much time anymore to go and sit down with a book in a coffee shop or even at home for like one or two hours. Mm -hmm. you, you would have to make a real effort to do that. And the beauty of audio is that you can start listening to content while you're doing other things. Mm -hmm. right? so me Multitasking. As, exactly. So me as a consumer, if I look at my own kind of behavior, mm -hmm. I listen to way more audio than I watch video actually. And it's simply because it's so much easier to fit into my daily lifestyle, right? When I'm in the gym, when I'm in the morning, I get into a grab car, I drive around town. It's so easy to just put on headphones and listen to any type of audio content. And that time before was kind of dead. So you combine the fast smartphone with the uh, ability to listen to it anytime and like take that dead time, convert it into something more interesting or more productive. Mm and you see that growth in the audio se sector. And for us with Phonos, it actually started with my co-founder, Swan. Mm -hmm. So she's been an entrepreneur for many years, right? And she was looking for a way to read more business books, but she was very busy. And that's why she started looking for audiobooks as a solution. And she looked at what was available in the market and nothing that was out there really satisfied her like as a customer in english or vietnamese in or? vietnamese okay in english it's quite there's plenty, it, it, there's plenty yeah. right but she was specifically looking for vietnamese mm. and i think there's a lot of people like like her who you know she's fluent in english but when it comes to like certain subjects it's still more comfortable to listen in vietnamese right mm -hmm. when it comes to business or something like it's a little bit more easier to not have to think about english at yep. all mm -hmm. and just focus on the content of the books so for her she was looking for that and all that was on the market were some illegal apps right which were low quality and by illegal you mean unlicensed like they're just yeah, you know, exactly. taking English content, adapting it, but without the consent of the author. Exactly. So no publishers, no authors right. involved. They would illegally read the, or like read them out loud mm. and just put them on something. Mm. And those were relatively low quality because these people had no incentive to actually invest into creating a great product. Mm. They didn't care enough. And other solutions, there was nothing that was really hitting the quality mark where she 
as a customer that was actually willing to pay for content would be like, okay, I want to use this. So that was really the start of the idea, right? And another key piece, I think, of why now is besides this audio resurgence, why now in Vietnam is very related to the payment system right now, where in the last few years, and I'm sure you've talked about this with other people, you've seen the rise of like e-wallets, right? Mobile payments. So in the last two, three years, we've seen Netflix, Spotify, for example, really enter the market mm -hmm. and Vietnamese started subscribing to like digital subscriptions. And a big game changer has been that people are able to now pay for this stuff with, for example, mobile wallets, where before you could only pay in the app stores if you had a credit card. Mm. And that changed only in the last two years or so. Like One, Momo years. integrated now and... Yeah, so Momo's fully integrated with Apple okay. and with Google. Mm. They went with Google first, but then Apple also like in the last one, two years mm. did that. Okay. And before that, the only way to pay was either you had a credit card, which is only I think like 4% of Vietnamese. So most people just don't have it. Or you had to do some complex thing with like gift cards from the US app store. Like mm. some people got around it like that, but it wasn't very user friendly. Mm. So that really changed in the last two years. And that's been an important step for a company like us, which is looking to build a you know, subscription business and charge for content. And these changes have really been a big reason of why now is a great time to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, when I asked that question um, and was thinking about it, the answer I was expecting was, you know, you, you talk about addressable market and the, the growth of audiobooks. And obviously we have that, but actually yours is also a technical thing that really enables uh, an existing customer base that, you know, would have potentially not bought your product or other subscription related products that now are enabled to, you know, I'd be very curious to see what the Apple stats are. Of course they won't share that, but um, uh, it seems like you guys are in, in the next generation of apps that are not only charging for content, but are subscription based uh, enabled by this new payment solution, um, which kind of moves into my, to my next question about um, kind of technology, about how you guys are seen as a tech company. I mean, uh, at its whole, you know, audiobooks is is content and not exactly tech, but it's also obviously tech enabled. What are you guys doing at Phonos to um, increase accessibility of this content through tech? And, and what is tech to you guys exactly? Mm -hmm. Tech for us is really about the ability to create a great customer experience mm -hmm. where on first, it's the distribution itself, right? So you're, everyone has a phone, everyone has that. So you don't have to have them go into a store and buy your product anymore, right? In the past, maybe if you did audiobooks on CD, like they would actually have to go to a store, buy the CD, bring it home. Now, all they have to do is download an app. Mm -hmm. And then on the app, we're able to really do certain customizations for them and also offer easy access. So for example, the first chapter of every audiobook on our app is free, right? It would be very hard to do if we didn't have the technology and the customer, the ability to customize this kind of stuff, right? With a CD in a store, you don't really have that. With an app, we can do that. We can be like, hey, just try it. You know, sometimes the first chapter is an hour long. Mm. Go ahead, listen to it. If you like it, great. You can subscribe and listen to the remain like the rest of the book. Mm -hmm. If you don't, like that's fine too, mm. right? There's not a lot of really stuff we require from the user. So they can literally go from hearing about Phonos on this podcast, downloading the app two minutes later, and one minute later already listening to the first chapter of any book. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to us. And I think another part of it is the ability to really interact or, or see the results of users, right? How they use the product and see the data on the back end of, okay, how much do they listen? When do they listen? So with a lot of non-tech products, you don't really have that ability. You don't know when are people actually using my product? Mm -hmm. Like, are they still using it or do they stop using it after two days? With tech, because you have that data in the back end, you're able to monitor a lot more and use that as valuable information to actually improve the product for users. So, I mean, it's, it's like going to a bookstore, you know, I mean, they, you obviously can see how many books you're selling of each category, but as to how many uh, pages it's actually being read or, you know, there's so many factors in a bookstore, right? It could be in the back, it could be in the front. 
uh, for you guys, you know, uh, it gets me thinking like, um, you could really know what, what's trending, what's really real time too. You can see what's being listened to, what the demand is from the customer end, which kind of leads to my next question. Um, for a product like you guys, what, what is being listened the most? Do you, do you find it to be like self-help books, fiction books, um, whatever the gamut is like, what is, what is trending in, in the Phonos world for the Vietnamese listener? Yeah, we're definitely seeing nonfiction books mm -hmm. being a big trend. Self-help. Self-help, okay. business. Hmm. And, you know, it, we've seen a big trend there. I think it really ties into the mentality of the younger Vietnamese audience mm -hmm. that's really looking for knowledge, for skills, mm -hmm. for developing their career. At the same time, we in the last few months, we also started partnering with the biggest, we partnered with the biggest like fiction publishers mm -hmm. in Vietnam mm -hmm. and started releasing both books by low, uh, Vietnamese authors mm -hmm. and by international authors. Mm -hmm. And we're also st starting to see like rising demand there. So it's actually starting to be quite varied. Right, in, in general, these these nonfiction books like self-help books, are there a lot of them in the market already? Or are you actually taking English content and you're like literally the first to adapt into Vietnamese or a bit of both, I guess. No, we're mostly because the way the legal landscape works mm. with publishing is we work with the biggest publishers in Vietnam, mm. right? So they are in charge. They work with the biggest international publishers mm. and they get the rights to all of these different books and they do the translation. Mm. And we work with the biggest publishers and we have exclusive rights to all of these books on Phonos, right? So all the like over now we're at over a hundred like best-selling books, mm -hmm. all of them are hundred percent exclusive to us. And we bring, we just bring the audio version to life, but we're not necessarily bringing the titles themselves here. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I mean, um, aside from books and publishers, I mean, um, for those of you that don't know, we have a partnership with Phonos, um, small scale still, but we, we want to bring it up another level, uh, where a lot of our Viet Cetera long form content that's, that's rich and available on, on text is being, uh, available only on Phonos and the Vietcetera website, but in full length on Phonos. Um, how are those? I mean, we must not be the only ones doing that with you guys. Like, is there interest on in other types of content, not books necessarily, but maybe like um, other types of audio? Um, you know, what, how's how's that look like for you guys? As well? Yeah, we're seeing a wide. In general, I think audio, you can kind of divide the audio space, I think, into a couple sectors, mm -hmm. right? So what we're seeing is on one hand, I would say you have the developed like music market and there you have like the international players like Spotify and maybe the local players like Zing. And that is very developed. I don't see a lot of like new stuff really happening there. Then you have user generated content. Mm -hmm. So that's where podcasts, for example, would come in, right? Like this one. And what we're seeing there is just in the market in general is a lot of early adopters really starting to get in on it and mm -hmm. really being very passionate about it. Right. So I think this industry is especially like podcasting in Vietnam is still early, mm -hmm. but it's very promising. And I particularly like like how much passion I see by mm -hmm. the people actually jumping into it. It's a, it's a greenfield market. I mean, um, it gets me thinking about when I, I, I read the story of like Jeff Bezos and how he started Amazon, 1990, whatever it was, and the internet was growing 3000% and, mm -hmm. you know, he starts in bookstores and expands. I, I think uh, for potentially both of our categories for you guys, you know, how do you own, literally own audio content or audio books as like a noun in Vietnam? It's like, when, when people say whiskey in Vietnam, instead of saying whiskey, they say like Macallan. Or when they say, right. instead of saying plane, they say Boeing. Um, I think for you guys, you could do the same. And even for us, you know, we think about that too. So this first adopter mentality, and obviously if you do it long enough, you can kind of get big enough to, to really own it as well. So, so know, let me ask you actually, yeah. like, because you guys did, are doing, mm -hmm. you know, a, more of a bet on audio mm -hmm. and a transition into creating your own audio content, mm -hmm. both in English and Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. So what was the driver for you guys to take that plunge? I, I think for us, um, just the first adopter mindset, I'm a big fan of it. I think, again, Vietnam is, is a greenfield market as a whole, not just by industry, but as a whole, because there's so many entrenched legacy players in, in any sort of industry, and they have very little incentive for innovation. So if you could really spice things up a little bit, it doesn't have to be rocket science, just doing it a little bit better than the other guy or doing something so different, not so different, but fundamentally is 
um, a different way to approach it, then then you can unlock some un, unrealized value. And so I think, I mean, for podcasts specifically, um, so a little background, we, we, we create our own audio and podcasts and we publish it and that's pretty much it. Um, we've seen pretty good success, even not only just in uh, reception of it. And it, these are multimedia podcasts. We do audio as the anchor, mm-hmm. uh, but we also have a video version and, and uh, limited text kind of transcript version on the, on the website. And yeah, we've been able to monetize it too. It's not been the easiest, but it's actually on the path to monetization, it's been much faster than our other products. Maybe it's because we're more, more mature, but it also tells you that there's an appetite, not only in the advertiser and brand end, but also just readers and consumers and listeners that they just want new stuff. So, you know, the question going back to what I was asking you earlier about what themes were most interesting, self-help, we've seen a tremendous, you know, uh, you know, just before this, we were talking about how I'm, I'm seeing a second Polish friend tomorrow. Uh, you're the first one today. Um, and she has a similar, uh, she just left her job starting a new one. And she's talking about, and she's Vietnamese too, actually Vietnamese Polish. Um, she was talking about how, uh, she's looking for these self-help books too. And she's bilingual primarily in Vietnamese, but also in English. And there's just not enough of them, um, more in English, of course. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and for her to listen rather than read, it might be a little bit easier. Um, and obviously there's very few video formats uh, of this kind of material because video in, in Vietnam is really, you know, flash, flash, bling, bling, really fast, 15 second, 30 seconds. So there is a hunger for this more long form content, which implies a, a return to the past in a sense, but is, is resurgent for a lot of reasons. And I think it's these young people wanting to discover these more untraditional yet very fundamentally important topics like self help or learning or development and, and such things. So um, I even see that yeah. in the bookstores, mm. right? When you go to a bookstore here in Saigon, if you go to Fahasa, you'll see a huge section of nonfiction books, mm. right? And there is fiction, but it's it seems a little bit smaller. Mm. But uh, I think fiction in the Vietnam sense is like celebrities and, you know, like entertainment. It's like this um, kind of like a living in, I forget the term, like you're uh, living in someone else's shoes in a way, um, mm, like escapist. Yeah. Or something okay. like that. Um, whereas nonfiction is, is really fundamentally relatable mm-hmm. on a day to day level. So I think there's a hunger for that. Yeah. Um, I think it actually ties into the Asian mentality mm-hmm. of like the willingness to invest in things mm-hmm. of like that improve your life and your family. So mm-hmm. like your career, your, yourself, your language skills, your kids, mm-hmm. like that's something people see a lot of value in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, in Austria, right, where, um, so I'm Polish, but I'm also Austrian. Mm -hmm. Um, So in Austria, when you go to a bookstore, you will see a lot of fiction and like literature, fiction, that's the main areas you'll see first. And then kind of the nonfiction stuff is a bit on the side. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of a switch there that I see in Vietnam. There is that hunger, like you're saying, for Mm -hmm. that nonfiction, self-help kind of content. Mm Right. But I think there's also interesting stuff we see happening in the fiction world here. Right. We have a couple of books by Vietnamese authors and we even had like some authors come in and they recorded like bonus audio content mm. just like exclusively Exclusive, for the right. audiobook version. Nice. Yeah. So there's some interesting stuff happening there as well. And I think, you know, th- there's also something about the nonfiction, local nonfiction authors mm. where they're really able to dig into the local zeitgeist mm. and really address, okay, this is what's happening in Vietnam right now, Mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. Cool. Well, you know, Oscar, we're talking a lot about opportunity and and, and the feel good stuff. Let's talk about the challenges as a startup, you know, not only for your category, but uh, as a startup company in Vietnam. Um, But we're going to start with a more specific question. And it's a question from one of our listeners here today about payments and subscriptions, you know, talked, talked about how Uh, Apple and Google allow for non-credit card, you know, virtual transactions. Let's hear from one of our listeners about uh, a more specific question about one of the challenges you probably think of every day. So we're going to listen here. Hi, Oscar. My name is Chi, and I have a question for you. Has there been resistance to a subscription pay to listen content model in Vietnam? And if yes, how so? Yeah, great question from a great question from Chi. Uh, one of our very dedicated listeners on this podcast. So um, paying for content, I mean, does it, you know, there's companies out there like Spotify, Netflix, you know, but they're they're massive. They have budgets for this kind of stuff um, to user acquisition. For you guys, what are the lessons you've learned? Is there, 
churn? What, what's retention look like? What is, you know, the, what is the funnel for user acquisition look like? And do they get to the point where they have to pay? And they're like, oh wait, you know, I'm sure that happens for everybody, but maybe you can share some lessons there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That was the big question, mm. right? Charging for content, right? Even before we launched and even after we launched, that was the big question that people were asking us and that some people were skeptical about mm. is, can you charge for content in Vietnam? Because for so many years, there's been so much pirated content here mm. and people were not used to paying for content. I think part of it is because even if they wanted to, they really couldn't, right? Without credit cards, without e-wallets, like it was kind of hard to pay for digital content. So that was the big question. And what we've seen is thankfully our hypothesis has turned out to be true, which is they are, but make sure your product is good enough for them to do it. So they're not very forgiving. It they're sounds like, like if you not if you charge, then, yeah, not yeah. if you charge them, right? Yeah. It's if you do a free product, mm -hmm. like you can probably get away with quite a bit mm -hmm. when it comes to, for example, the audio quality, mm -hmm. right? And the voice talent that's doing the book. So a lot of the stuff that we found, like what other people were doing before us, I would find like audiobooks by people where, let's say it's like the autobiography or, or a biography of Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. And it would be like the voice talent would be like an 18 year old girl. It's like, you know, it, it just takes, not a lot of thought was put into it mm. of like, okay, maybe this 80 year old man shouldn't be voiced by, you know, a 19 year old girl. Mm. Um, so these kinds of small things, if you give it away for free, it's gonna be much more forgiving. Mm. But if you want to charge for this kind of content, you know, especially the kinds of users that are also open to paying for content, they have certain expectations of quality. Mm. And that's really where our focus is. And that's really what we continue to work on, uh, on improving is hitting those certain quality milestones and making sure that the users feel like, okay, this costs me money, but what I see, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. So you guys are just focusing on piling as much good content as possible. You, you have to keep adding value every single day. Right. It's not like you're just done with the library and you're, you're dust your hands or you're done. You gotta, you gotta keep adding it on. Yeah. I mean, huh? it's, that's the beauty of working in software in some ways that you have the ability to continually kind of improve your product, mm. right? So the app, we're continually improving. Mm -hmm. We're talking to our users, getting their feedback, seeing something that doesn't work, improving it. On the audio side, same thing, right? So when you go to our app, um, when someone leaves a rating for an audiobook, they can leave a separate rating for the contents of the book and then for the voice and like the audio side of it, mm -hmm. because we want that feedback and to hear from people. And that goes directly to our audio recording process. Okay, like how can we improve it? Can we use a different voice? Should we do it, you know, different speeds, different uh, accent? There's a lot of little nuance. So for us, it's a process of continual improvement. Mm. And I think that's kind of key to, if you want to charge people for content, at this stage in Vietnam, mm -hmm. like make sure they feel like they're getting their money's worth. They're they're value chasers. So good good lesson there. Um, we're going to listen to our second listener question, second and final listener question today, and it's going to be about, um, if I recall correctly, about uh, you know you talked about this resurgence in the West of audio formats, um, and, and you kind of answer the question as if um, you know payments was the one that really unlocked. Um, but what about audio as a format in a whole? Like, is it is it really going to be like put up a fight against video? Not a fight, but run parallel to it. Let's let's hear her question right now. Hi, um, I have a question for Oscar, and my name is Zoe. So, how long will it take for the audio format in Vietnam reach the same level of popularity as it has in the West? Yeah, so uh, popularity. You know, is it driven by having more creators that are on audio? Is it just people suddenly one day, you know, downloading the app more? Is it, you know, actually one of my questions uh, to rephrase that, you know, I was thinking in the West, people spend a lot of time commuting mm -hmm. in and passively in public transportation and cars. So they're, they're kind of uh, trained to, to listen, I guess, and they're in a situation where they have to, whereas in Vietnam, maybe not as much. That's my hypothesis. What, what, what's your take on that as a format? Yeah, I think it will take time. I think we have what we have right now is a very strong foundation, right? With everyone having smartphones, mm -hmm. fast internet, and mm -hmm. the ability to pay, we have a great foundation mm -hmm. for it to continue growing. 
right? And there's going to be more investment in it and more companies interested in it. So it's a great time to build on top of that foundation. It will take some time. You know, I, I had a call with the founder of Stitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of their things was, you know, he said they were actually too early, right? So the, he, they were one of the first like podcasting companies in the US. But really, it took another 10 years or so mm. before the medium really took off. I think it's going to go much faster in Vietnam because everything is already pre-built, right? Mm. It's not a completely new industry that's coming out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. I think what we're going to see is a little bit, especially the creators are going to drive a lot of it, right? So I'm excited for that. And I think the other part is the lifestyle. Vietnamese lifestyles are becoming more and more Western in some way. Mm. Very busy, a lot of... More white-collar. More white-collar jobs, exactly. They have more passive time, I guess you could say. Yeah, more people going to gyms, for example. More people buying cars. Mm -hmm. Uh, Worse traffic. Or the the metro station opening. I was thinking that could be a game changer. Metro station, I'm actually very interested to see the potential change in content consumption habits when that happens. So, right. You know. Yeah, th- that's a big one. Mm. Right. And then also we're going to see how I was wondering about that recently, like how traffic is mm-hmm. going to change that as well, where you, you look at cities like Bangkok, where it's mostly cars now. Mm-hmm. Right. Not everyone is on motorbikes anymore. Like is Saigon going to go or is Vietnam going to go in that direction of cars everywhere? And if yes, is the traffic going to turn horrible and everyone's going to be stuck in their car for hours like in Bangkok? Mm -hmm. Maybe. We'll Mm -hmm. see. But what we're seeing right now is people are listening a lot in the mornings and evenings. Mm. So I think they like waking up and listening to an audiobook, for example. They're making their coffee, they're eating breakfast or whatever. Exactly. And then at night as well, maybe they're making dinner Mm -hmm. or they go to the gym or something in the evening. Or Mm -hmm. even some people like to listen to it before they fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of usage in those times. So, so far, it doesn't seem like the a little bit less commuting time is a huge factor. But I think if it does increase, it will have an effect. So we're, we're, we're talking a lot about like um, high level trends that you're seeing, you know, um, how about the users themselves? Have you profiled them? Like, who are they? Are they Vietnamese in their 20s? Are they middle income, upper income? Do they speak English as a signal? Like, what are those signals that you've, you've noticed in the first kind of cohort of, you know, you guys have been in, uh, around for like a year or two, or I, I believe. What, yeah. what are those profiles that you've seen recurring? Yeah. As, a, as a theme. What I see is, I think it's quite similar with Vietcetra actually, where we have the young professionals that are a big part of our audience. Uh, maybe they're in their first job or maybe the first couple of years in their career. And I think one thing that really sets them apart is they're a, a little bit more of a global mindset, right? Where they're very not- curious. Very curious right. and not just consuming like Vietnamese content, but some Western content as well. They're, they're on YouTube, they listen to podcasts. So they have a little bit more of an interest in a global kind of vision and global affairs. You know, it got me thinking, I might have, uh, not only will I buy a subscription of Phonos right after this, there you go. but I'd love to see you guys do like um, corporate memberships, like getting, as like a tech gift actually. You know, I was thinking, this person I'm seeing tomorrow, I was, I was going to get her like, a, oh, uh, you're quitting your job. You're, you're doing something new. Like, here's a little you know thing to motivate yourself kind of a little bit more. And I was thinking, I don't want to buy material things because that's tacky. You know, who wants another chocolate bar or whatever? You, you know, uh, actually, I love chocolate. But anyways, point aside, um, giving something like this, I think that'd be cool. You know, yeah. um, you know, it's gifting subscription content. I think that's a that's a new thing. Yeah. Just a just a little side note. Uh, but yeah, it's great to hear that the the audience is really this emerging class, and um, you know, obviously that's a rising group in, in Vietnam. I think, mm. well, middle class as a very specific group. It's about thirty five percent of the economy and uh, or the the country, and it's growing. Um, you know, one thing that I like is I've seen. I was a little bit worried that the audience might just be like high income people, but w- that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing it's not necessarily like people with high salaries. Like, yeah, there's, they're usually educated and you know, they are usually living in the big cities, but we are seeing, you know, these are not people with, that are making tons and tons of money and that, that's it, but with you know, quite normal salaries, but curious, ambitious, 
interested in knowledge and developing themselves. So that's very encouraging for me to see. I like that. Well, good. Oscar, uh, we're wrapped up here today. We've hit our 30 minute time limit as much as I'd love to chime. I know yeah. it's good conversations always go quickly. Oscar Jasoniak. Close enough. Got it. Uh, CEO and co-founder of Phonos, an audiobook app based and launched here in Vietnam, growing quickly, doing cool stuff, audiobooks, Vietnamese, some nice little keywords there for you guys to remember. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Vietnam Innovators. Um, Thanks for having me. And for everyone listening, go download the Phonos app and listen to the Vietcetra content on it. Definitely Phonos, download it. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, Again, another episode of Vietnam Innovators wrapped up every Tuesday at 11 a.m. distributed on Spotify, Apple Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Facebook. And of course, we have a text transcript version on vietcetra.com available as well. Thank you again, Oscar, and we'll see you next time. See ya. You can find the full audio of this episode of Vietnam Innovators on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in every Tuesday morning to listen to other innovating stories of our guest speakers. Thanks for listening to another episode of Vietnam Innovators, brought to you by our partners, health tech startup GeoHealth. They're best known for their doctor at home services, but offer much more than that. If you haven't already, check out their mobile apps on the App Store and Google Play for more, or drop by for a visit to their new smart clinic at M Plaza in Ho Chi Minh City.